So welcome back Wide Fox fans. So tonight I'm out working on some wiring. Now if you've watched the other two where I've built the engine harness, I took out the salt and pepper shakers and deleted basically a lot of circuits out for the emissions and airbags out of that. Some of you guys have asked questions about taking the connectors apart, which I only showed but never explained, and how I know what circuits I need to take out of these harnesses. So I'm gonna answer both of those questions in this video tonight as a little bit extra for you guys because you guys have asked and I'm always trying to help you out with a little bit of edutainment. So if you've watched this week where I've been posting a lot of stuff almost daily on a lot of the wiring harness, right now I'm currently working on the main harness that runs kind of behind the dash. So you've got an engine harness that kind of runs the engine and all that comes in through the passenger side, comes into the ECM. And then you've got a main, like a main beam harness or a main harness that goes behind the dash. Another one shoots back to the tail lights and the fuel tank. And then you've got a branch that comes out the left side, driver's side of the car that picks up some of the ignition and some of the other pieces that go with it. Okay, class be seated. School is in session. When you start working on harnesses, they can be daunting, I'll, I'll agree with that. I want you guys to think of basic stuff on harness. So on the connectors themselves, there's gonna be basically, I'm gonna say two types on the very, very foundational level. One is either gonna be a receiver or a female, and the other one's gonna be a male. The pins themselves are gonna be similar. They're gonna be either female or male. Now I'm talking from the big ECM connectors that it may have 120 pins to, to something as simple as this, which is one of the airbag ones I took out of the main harness that has four individual wires or circuits. Okay, so start with, here's kind of the pick shape I have. This is my favorite. I have a five pack of picks that I like to use. This one is kind of like an offset angle in that, but it does very well picking these picks apart. So if you need a set of these, I'll throw them down in the Amazon store, but these things are fabulous for picking these connectors apart. So again, cut through the sheathing, honestly, is just a simple razor blade just like this. Make sure it's nice and sharp, that way it'll go right through. And concerning connectors, I think a lot of you guys feel, I don't know, would you say timid, scared? You guys define it of what it is but you really don't understand how to take these things apart and how simple they are. So to start with, again, this one is four, four wires. You can see they're kind of pink and purple, and this is one of my airbag ones I took out. This one is a female, so it's obviously gonna have another connector that goes inside here that snaps in. But the connectors themselves, think of it this, you've got basically an outer shell to it, you're going to have an inner piece. Now this red piece in here, I call it the blocker. Basically it's a piece, an extra piece in there that's meant to keep the tongs that keep the pieces in from coming out. So with your pick, if you ever want to take these apart, what you can do is you can just pull them out and just scoop them out and they're going to come out. Very simple. Oops. So a very simple piece. Now what this is meant to do is basically press outwardly this way and if I show you down in here which I probably can't very well each one of these pins there's four pins four metal pins in there each one of those has like a little finger or a detent that keeps them in so with your pick in order to take them out you would feel down in there and you would pry that away from the pin and with these you just got to be patient they're plastic now, once you have that pulled apart, you're then going to pull the pin out the back. And you can keep a little pressure on the pin while you pull this apart. And then the pin itself is going to come out the back. So again, this is going to be a male pin here or a female, depending on what's going to go in there. Males will probably slide in and connect in like this. And then on the back side, you can also have some like this. This is a weatherproof one, so you can kind of see it's got a rubber back to it which you can always pull out if you wanted to. But with those, they're meant to protect the wiring and the connection from weather. So that's why it's called a weather connector, pretty simple. 
Now, when I'm doing this work, this is the same thing as the ECM. So imagine the ECM is, you know, it's, it's huge, right? It's like this big. It's got three rows, 40 pins piece. But it's the same process. You basically take out the center, the blocker, as I call it. You pry off the little finger, and then you just pull the wire out. Now to put it in, same thing. If you're going to repin this for any reason, you just push it in. And then you can look down in there and make sure your finger is holding it in. You can always pull on it. If it doesn't pull out, hey, finger's doing its job. And then these literally snap right back in. So now with that, it's really not so bad. It's not scary. You just need to pull out the blocker, pull the fingers away from the pins, and then just lightly pull them out the back. Very simple. Don't think of them any more difficult than that. And a lot of you guys that may see that, hey, I can take the, any of these apart and reconfigure them as I need to. The pins, obviously, if it's going to be a flat blade versus a round or something like that, yeah, that makes a difference. And the more times you do this and that, like I said, when I took the salt and peppers apart, keep all those round connectors because I can always repin this connector with some new circuit because it'll snap right in. It's all the same stuff. Now, second question you guys have had have been about how do I know what I'm taking out, what I should take out or versus leave versus just like snipping the connector off. Once you know what circuits you need to take out, it's not so bad to take them out, right? You just did it. The question you guys are having is, how the heck do I know what, what I'm pulling out? So on the 92 itself, one of the first things I did when I took it apart, let's say, took the harness out, I labeled every connector of what it connected to. So I knew where my emissions went, I knew my crash zone sensors for the airbags, so I knew what the connectors were in the harness and what they went to. Once I stripped off all the sheathing, of course it looks like a big mad mess of wires, and that's okay. If you guys don't have a manual, either a service manual or an owner's manual or something, I've got this old Chilton manual. It's got all the connectors in there. The hard part is, it's pretty easy to look at this and go, okay, it's pink and purple, and it's a connector. Where does that meet in here? All right, so inside these pages, if I show you the big zoom out, there's a big page. I can come in to wiring diagram, obviously 1992, page six. This is what I'm looking at, 1992. If I look at my airbag, what you'll see is that it's got a module. Now this right here is the blue module. If you know you've ever unplugged, it beeps at you and that. So it goes to everything here. It has two connectors that go to it. And one of those connectors runs out to a connector here that has four circuits. Now, these wires are different colors. So PK, if you don't have a color code, PK means pink, O is orange, P is purple, LG is light green, pink, W is white, purple, and light blue. So I know coming out of my airbag module, two connectors. This is one of my white ones, but I'm looking for a round connector of this shape, which is great, with four wires with this color code. Enter a shape with four wires with pink and purple. So now I know how this all connects in. So that is on my diagram, but this shows me that you've got a pink and a white. You've got some purples and blues and greens, just like it showed. So there again, I knew going in from a 92 harness into an 80 chassis, what I didn't need was airbags. So the module got taken out. I then showed you how the connectors were, and I knew where the connectors physically were in the harness. I just stripped away all the sheathing and I've literally traced out where each of those wires go. And I've just depended on the connectors because I don't need them. Saves the weight, but saves the confusion too. Secondly, 
the emissions pieces again. All of the valves in that that run with uh, harnesses and they have vacuum lines and all that. When I bought the 92, it didn't even have an EGR valve on it. It literally had the backing plate, but of course it had a plate over where the EGR valve went. So everything else from there wasn't giving me an engine code, it ran fine. So I knew everything else was redundant. I didn't need it. So there again, I pulled it all through the firewall and most of that is connected direct to the ECM. But since I just told you how to take a connector apart, even if it's a big one, I just took the pins out, took the wiring out. Simple as that. So now that you kind of know my secrets of how to take connectors apart and figure out where everything goes in the car, it's a matter of how are you going to do it? I'm going to get back to doing this IP or the main beam harness to get out the stuff I need for the ECM that is then going to go to the gauges and then is going to connect up to all of the taillights and everything else to make this work. So it's a little bit difficult for me because I'm not putting the same model year. I'm going back a generation, not even generation, I'm going back model years. I'm going back to the stone age of Fox bodies, if you call it that. I'm going from the end of it to the beginning. And I don't want a bunch of redundant harnesses. So I'm depinning, repinning, and making it all work. So hopefully, guys, the, those of you that had questions on how to take connectors apart, I answered that for you. You know how I'm kind of depinning, repinning, and I know what I'm taking out in the airbags, the emissions, and then the stuff I really don't need, just taken out because I don't need it. So that's it for this time from Basin Motorsports. If I've confused you anymore, let me know. Hopefully this answers some of your questions. And if not, hey, I'll make another video. Just ask. See you next time.